Can the government create hurricanes? What is the government doing to modify the weather? Kristen Megan is back to talk about this issue. Kristen, I'm going to go right to this video that Marjorie Taylor Greene posted. She writes, yes, they can control the weather. Here is Obama's CIA director, John Brennan, talking about it. Anyone who says they don't or makes fun of this is lying to you. By the way, the people know it and hate all of you who try to cover it up. And the reason we're doing this is in two days... We are expected here where I live in Florida to get another hurricane. This is going to be the third one in the last couple of months. And I noticed that a lot of people are starting to talk about this issue of weather modification. Like, are these hurricanes man-made? Are they natural? Is there a mix of both? Could we ever prove one or the other? And what, what questions can we ask or what's just going down a fruitless rabbit hole. So Chris is explain her background in a second, but let's just watch John Brennan for a minute here and then we'll talk about that, okay? Let me know if you can. Another example is the array of technologies, often referred to collectively as geoengineering, that potentially could help reverse the warming effects of global climate change. One that has gained my personal attention is stratospheric aerosol injection, or SAI. A method of seeding the stratosphere with particles that can help reflect the sun's heat in much the same way that volcanic eruptions do. An SAI is associated with higher temperatures and providing the world economy additional time to transition from fossil fuels. This process is also relatively inexpensive. The National Research, Research Council estimates that a fully deployed SAI program would cost about $10 billion yearly. As promising as it may be, moving forward on SAI would also raise a number of challenges for our government and for the international community. On the technical side, greenhouse gas emission reductions would still have to accompany SAI to address other climate change effects, such as ocean acidification, because SAI alone would not remove greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. On the geopolitical side, the technology's potential to alter weather patterns and benefit certain regions of the world at the expense of other regions could trigger sharp opposition by some nations. Others might seize on SAI's benefits and back away from their commitment to carbon dioxide reductions. And as with other breakthrough technologies, global norms and standards are lacking to guide the deployment and implementation of SAI and other. What you just saw in that video is basically a video that has circulated for quite a while. And when you think about how much technology has advanced over the years, did we stop at the Model T Ford? Absolutely not. And there are several videos that have circulated um, over the past 10 years that if you guys are not familiar, I'll explain. I have been on the show before and hinted at this, but I spent nine years on active duty in the Air Force working in bioenvironmental engineering. And part of that job, you have to, to dumb it down real quick, just think of OSHA, the EPA, the DOT, and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. So basically, I had to track all the chemical procurements that came on base. I was one of the people that approved those hazardous materials and track them cradle to grave. So basically, I had to know what chemical was being used, what was it being used for, and are they wearing the appropriate PPE, utilizing the engineering controls, and are they disposing of it properly? So to really summarize this, I had heard about weather modification. I had heard about the, the phrase now that makes me cringe chemtrails because that's kind of been hijacked. Um, I heard about this and I remember thinking, if this is happening, I definitely would know it if because people were saying the military was doing it. And on my journey to debunk these programs, I found out I was actually one of the people that was highly involved and completely had no idea. And that was based on the chemicals that I was pushing through to classified areas where they retrofitted the aircraft. So now this was in the fall of 2010. And many people might have seen a video that's been going around viral. I was in Geneva, Switzerland, standing up against the World Health Organization. And um, sorry, I'm just checking to make sure that's not Allison. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, I uh, had a viral a clip go viral. Someone recognized me. And a lot of people now think that I just came forward and I just want to correct the record that no, it's been about 14 years. And what I really want your viewers to know, Allison, is that it is very possible to modify the weather. What I saw was a uh, stratospheric aerosol injection, injection uh, as solar radiation management programs that the military was involved in. And again, that was 14 years ago. So how far did they come? And during this process of becoming a whistleblower and getting federal whistleblower protection, 
right in plain sight, hidden in plain sight. The Weather Channel talked about it. I'll never forget. It was 2012 or 2013. There was a, I think, a three series special on the Weather Channel that actually talked about what people are actually questioning today was that they said that they can divert and steer hurricanes. They can shrink them. And if you can shrink, can you expand? Don't forget, if you want to support the show and you like wine and you like very good wine, like excellent wine that you cannot get anywhere else, these are very limited edition wines, small family vineyards, generational vineyards passed down from, uh, I don't know, like in some cases, four or five generations, 200 plus year old vineyards, hand-picked grapes, natural fermentation, and very remote regions of the world. So we're talking like six to 9,000 feet in Argentina and places that are very hard to get to, Italy, Spain, France, Chile. So go support the show, join the club. You'll get six bottles of wine, really, really, really good wine every three months, six bottles every three months. And you, if you're not somebody who enjoys wine, then you'll have them for a birthday present, a party, whatever, your hurricane party. It will never be empty handed. And it's just a great way to support the show. These are amazing wines. Like I said, they're very limited edition. They would not be available to people in the United States if it weren't for this wine club. So um, go support the show and get yourself in the Allison Wine Club. There's a lot that comes with it too. You'll hear stories about where the wines come from, who makes them. And then also we are going to start live wine tasting. So that's going to be exciting. AllisonWinePromo.com. Okay. So let me go show this. Um, I want to show the CBS video because it's just, you know, another kind of example. I, I do wonder sometimes about, about um, like when Marjorie Taylor Greene, for instance, is the one sharing these videos. I wonder sometimes about if it's already oppositionally, it's already starting to become politicized in a way that like you're saying takes the credibility off of the conversation, not necessarily trying to say anything negative about her, but she represents, she represents sort of an archetype for the media, especially and the establishment of <laughs> Looney Tunes. And so, you know, if you just kind of like put the information out in a certain way, or it's coming from a certain person, not saying it's staged or it's organic or whatever, but it, I think it's easy for them to go, Oh, look at what MG MTG is saying now and all these crazy people. And it's just easy to write off because it's the same thing. Like how, if, if Trump or somebody associated with Trump talked about issues related to COVID, it was like totally conspiracy until Anthony Fauci was willing to switch his mind about it. And now that I'm kind of in this world of dialectic, we're like, there's the action and then the reaction or there's the narrative and then there's the opposition and then where's the truth like and how the manipulated sides can be kind of pitted against each other in a way that di diverts our attention from like what's really going on. I wonder about this sometimes. So I, I'm curious what you think about that. Like, you know, because every time I see something start trending, I it, it kind of makes me go, all right, why are we talking about this right now? Even if it's people that I agree with, it's like, okay, why are we all talking about this now? So anyway, she posted this video from CBS nine years ago. You know, they were talking about climate change yesterday, and now we're learning that scientists and researchers are looking at how to change the weather on purpose. That's right lasers now could one day manipulate rain and lightning. CBS This Morning contributor Michio Kaku is a physics professor at City College of New York. Professor, nice to see you. Extraordinary seeing Al Gore and Bill Clinton there together with Charlie, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah. yeah. They did not get into this discussion, no. though. <laughs> but it is fascinating. I mean, lasers, really, to change the weather? That's right. Well, as Mark Twain once famously said, everyone complains about the weather, but no one ever does anything about it. Well, instead of doing a rain dance, we physicists are firing trillion watt lasers into the I feel like that would be racist nowadays to say rain dance, but anyway, moving on. The sky. <laughs> actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts. This is potentially a game changer. But this is experimental. It's experimental. However, in the laboratory so far, it works. When you have water vapor and you have dust particles or ice <coughs> crystals, you can precipitate rain it condenses around the seeds. These seeds can also be created by laser beams. By firing trillion watt lasers, you rip apart the electrons, creating what are called ions, and these ions act like seeds, like dust particles, bringing down rain and even lightning. Go ahead. 
Well, I, I, this is fascinates me in part because, too, I remember reading the stories that China had used this during the Olympics, that the USSR had used this after Chernobyl to create rain clouds. I mean, w- did those really work then? We have some of these capabilities now? Inconclusive. Even in the 60s, the CIA used this to uh, bring down monsoons during the Vietnam War to wash out the Viet Cong. Okay, that's all, I mean, that's all you need to know, right? I mean, we're just like, it's a combat tool. <laughs> Come on. So, yeah. yes, yeah, so like you're saying, to create monsoons. I mean, what's a monsoon? A freaking that, It's like, yeah, like a massive flash a flooding of heavy right. rain in and you just think about, he talked about that was in the 60s. And if we've learned anything from our government, we know when they start, I always use this reference. If your spouse comes up to you and tells you that they want to seek out an open marriage, I guarantee you they're already having an affair. So if your government is telling you that, hey, we have all this technology that we can use to better uh, you know, our environment because of droughts here, or you know, we need to lessen the rain here, they're already doing it. And it's funny because when I came out and blew the whistle, I was told, you know, this is crazy. It can be, it couldn't happen. And then meanwhile, it's in my textbooks for one of my master's degrees. It's literally in my textbook and all the patents are there. That's why I always tell people again, go to geoengineeringwatch.org because as the teens say, that's where you have the receipts. That's where you find all the information, all the air sampling that's been done uh, and elevated, um, I can't even, my brain's not working. They went into the stratosphere and they do grab samples that are basically when you're, it's so hard to sample for this stuff because it's so small, the media that you have to collect it on, it goes right through, kind of like COVID through a mask. (laughs) So, you know, they have to have special media. And I don't know if you've seen like the documentary, The Dimming, but in all of these films that they have on their website of geoengineeringwatch.org, you can see the results of what they found in the air, in the soil. And again, it's just openly admitted and you'll see multiple states have been working to ban the practice of weather modification. Right. This was the article I was talking about earlier, Middle East eye climate change and cloud seeding exacerbated deadly flooding in Gulf countries. It's fascinating to me that they are asking about this in the (laughs) UAE, but we here in the United States where we have the first amendment and allegedly this press corps that's somehow distinct from our government can't ask these questions, but in the Middle East, they are willing to go there. I just, it's just so unfortunate. I mean, unfortunate is the nicest thing I can say about it. Uh, somebody else on Locals posted this from space.com, US military wants to own the weather. So like mm-hmm. you were talking about, this isn't just a, uh, some hokey scientist or whatever that's working at like a local university to just go up every once in a while on a nice day and pew, 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 like see what happens. (laughs) Um, Yeah, this is a military operation. Like that doesn't make me feel very good about it. So we got a bunch of questions for Kristen. If you're somebody who wants to support the show and be on Locals, you get to do this. You have to put questions in ahead of time for interviews. It's a great value. It's five bucks a month, which means like the amount of interviews I do is probably 25 cents a question. And you get to go one-on-one with some of the most interesting people and some of the most censored people on the internet. So go to alcimar.locals.com, sign up there. You can also support the show with a uh, piece of mail, actual mail. Send me your loose pocket change, winning lottery ticket, a note of encouragement, seeds that I can grow in my garden, um, artwork, whatever. PO Box 3355, Danellen, Florida, 34432. How can people support you, your lawsuit, and uh, keep up with what you're doing other than Twitter? You're Kristen Megan on Twitter. Yeah, if you actually... um... I, tr- I want to say I use my X and my TikTok account the most. You can find my TikTok account by just looking at my pinned video, the handles on there. But in relation to how I'm able to help more people, I would really encourage people to go to wethepatriotsusa.org. Um, in my bio is a link to a podcast I host there, but the website is linked there because we I work as an expert witness and a volunteer with this organization to help fund lawsuits that are infringement on property rights, parental rights, religious rights, you name it. And we, the Patriots USA is also a plaintiff and representing us in this lawsuit. And, um, you know, Kennedy's busy on the campaign trail. 
Um, this, it, we can take donations. If everyone can give like five or $10, it helps because this isn't for my financial gain. This is me putting my name out there. And you know, the federal government knows who I am. <laughs> so um, maybe I'll get secret service protection. Just kidding. I just landed roof, but um, yes, yeah. if you can help us help you because you never know when you're going to need legal assistance. And this is a nonprofit. I have a lot of faith in, and we actually just hosted our annual vaccine safety awareness marathon, but you'll see there's a donate button on there specifically for this lawsuit. Um, going to SCOTUS is never cheap, even though everyone on board tries to, you know, negate costs as, costs as much as possible. Um, that's what they try to do in the court of law is outspend the opposition. Okay. Thank you, Kristen. If you are somebody who would like to support the show and you want a great supplement. It's really a food. It's not really a supplement. It's food for your teeth or your brain or just uh, to boost your immune system. We're going into winter. A lot of people uh, like to take a fish oil or something. This is like your souped up fish oil. It's a fermented cod liver oil and concentrated butter oil blend. A lot of people are like, I'll just take any fish oil, but actually they're not created equal. A lot of it is crap. This is an amazing product. My dad's an orthopedic surgeon. He was the one who got me started on it because he was going to have to have root canals. Started taking this, healed his teeth naturally. I used to get cavities all the time. It's just a great product. I take it. My kids take it. This is the stuff I take. Fermented cod liver oil, concentrated butter oil blend. It's made the way that Dr. Weston A. Price, who is a, a dentist around the turn of the century, when cavities were starting to get really bad with industrialized food and everything, he, he was a guy who, after studying indigenous cultures and why they didn't have cavities, even though they never went to the dentist, this is what he he said would really help people with their nutrition. So it is a fermented cod liver oil with a high vitamin D butter oil from cows on spring grasses. It's just a great product to take. Like I take actually a tablespoon a day. My kids take a lot less than that. But uh, I like the cinnamon tingle flavor. If you want capsules, they do that too. They have other flavors. So go check it out. Greenpasture.org. Greenpasture.org. And use promo code Allison and check out. You get 10% off. 